Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Suzy Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall have the first part of the recent SPMG Forum tackling concerns on the rise of many gas stations. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smart Sports and Centers on what to do when one encounters a solid white center line road marking. This week's Pying to Pairs will be about wearing a proper uniform of PUV drivers. The public service segment centers on health and safety concerns in public transport. Showcase this week shall have the compact SUV from Maxxis, the D60 Elite. While for race weekend, we'll have the highlights of the 2021 Toyota Gazoo Racing VS Cup Leg 2. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this edition of Motoring Today. Join us! I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. This should be good for PUV drivers and operators and also for commuters. Capacity restrictions have been eased on PUVs and trains. Beginning November 4, jeepney and buses as well as light transit and railway lines in the National Capital Region will be allowed to take on more passengers as much as 70% capacity. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases supported the recommendation of the DOTR to gradually increase the passenger capacity in public transportation from 70% to full capacity over one month beginning on November 4. The DOTR recommended easing capacity restrictions on land public transport in light of Metro Manila being placed under Alert Level 3, which is expected to see more people moving about as more businesses are allowed to resume operations. The Transport Department also noted that 81.4% of Metro Manila are now fully vaccinated, which somehow eases concerns about the spread of COVID-19. Also, the department considered the plight of public transport drivers and operators affected by capacity restrictions in their operation. It said increasing the passenger capacity will mean higher revenue for the public transport sector. Capacity increase as well as the 1 billion peso cash aid will help PUV drivers, it added. The DOTR, through its attached agencies, issued circulars on how to implement the gradual increase in passenger capacity in road and rail transportation while still strictly implementing health and safety protocols. Are we ready for public transport to operate under full capacity? That is the question the DOTR should be asking itself. Commuters should also take great care in protecting themselves against infection while on board crowded public transport.
We're getting closer to finally seeing the LRT-1 extension toward Cavite in operation. The fleet of trains for this is growing. The Light Rail Manila Corporation or LRMC has announced that it has received another brand new fourth generation train set ordered from Spain and Mexico. This is the 12th train set of 30 that will form part of the modern light rail vehicle or LRV fleet to be used by the existing LRT-1 and the extension to Bacoor Cavite. All 12 train sets are stored at the Baclaran Depot in Pasay City awaiting complete safety checks, inspections, and test runs in preparation for being deployed by the middle of 2022. Each Gen 4 train set consists of 4 LRVs with total capacity of 1,300 passengers per trip. In announcing the arrival of the new train sets, Juan Alfonso, President and CEO of LRMC said that since assuming operation and management of LRT-1, the LRMC has increased the number of trains available for passengers by almost 50% while shortening waiting times at stations. Alfonso also said LRMC is moving forward with upgrades and fleet modernization in line with its commitment to service excellence. The LRT-1 is the oldest light rail transit system in the country, but by the time its extension to Cavite begins operations, it may be among the most modern. New developments in the issuance and renewal of driver's licenses are sure to generate some controversy, or at least some debate. The LTO has announced that it has begun issuing driver's licenses that are valid for 10 years, starting first at the Central Office Licensing Section and the Quezon City Licensing Center. Only those without records of violations will be issued the 10-year licenses. Those with violations can only have licenses valid for 5 years. The LTO also announced that those applying to get their licenses renewed will be required to take a 5-hour comprehensive driver's education or CDE seminar and pass a test. The CDE seminar can be taken for free at LTO driver's education centers and at LTO accredited driving schools for a fee. The LTO said that motorists renewing their licenses in areas where the system of issuing 10-year valid licenses are not yet in place can renew their driver's licenses using the old system. The new process for issuing 10-year and 5-year licenses is in line with Republic Act 10930 which amended the Land Transportation and Traffic Code. The law wants to make sure that only qualified motorists who possess both driving skills and knowledge of road safety and road courtesy are given the privilege to drive motor vehicles, said LTO Chief Assistant Secretary Edgar Galvante. Meanwhile, the validity of expired driver's licenses has been extended by two months from the date of expiration to give those renewing their licenses ample time to comply with the CDE requirement. The CDE, consisting of video and written materials produced by the LTO, is being offered free at all LTO offices and via the LTO website and through the LTO Facebook page and YouTube channel. Maybe it's a good idea for those who still have a long time to wait before their licenses expire to check out the CDE materials and brush up on their knowledge of traffic regulations and put the lessons to good use. Work on the MRT-7 is on track to meet targets for the year. Work on the MRT-7 project has reached a new milestone with two more brand new Hyundai Rotem train sets mounted on the MRT-7 tracks between University Avenue and Tandang Sora. San Miguel Corporation or SMC President Ramon Ang reported that the company expects to receive and install six more train sets before the year ends. Ang added that as work on the MRT-7 project progresses further and faster, SMC will be able to increase the number of train shipments from Korea in the coming months and mount these on the tracks later on for the testing. Those already on the tracks and in stores are regularly inspected and SMC is taking all necessary measures to properly maintain all train sets so they will be in tip-top shape when it's time for testing and operation, said Ang. Work on the 22km MRT-7 that runs from North Avenue in Kazan City to San Jose del Monte in Bulacan is 56% complete and test runs are scheduled to start by December 2022. When completed, it is expected to cut travel time from Quezon City to Bulacan to just 35 minutes. On its first year of operation, the MRT-7 is projected to accommodate 300,000 passengers per day and 850,000 passengers per day on its 12th year of operation. While busy building elevated expressways in Metro Manila, SMC believes the MRT-7 and other planned mass transport systems should be the backbone of mobility solutions for the metropolis. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motorway Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The Society of Philippine Motor Journalists or SPMJ recently held its fifth SPMJ Forum. The topic was about the rise of mini gas stations with fuel vending machines in outlying barangays and coastal areas. 
SPMJ invited representatives from the Department of Energy and from the private oil sector to discuss rising concerns about this new form of retailing fuel products. This edition of Motoring Forum tackles these concerns from the perspective of the department. Over the past few years, more and more mini gas stations with standalone gas pumps or fuel vending machines are being seen on the side of roads, many in out of the way barangays in the countryside and coastal areas. Many of them cater to tricycles and motorcycles, along with the occasional car and other four wheeled vehicles. However, these mini gas stations are now being seen in more urbanized settings, including populated areas, prompting concerns about their safety and questions from bigger oil companies about possibly unfair competition. The Society of Philippine Motoring Journalists, or SPMJ, decided to make these concerns about mini gas stations the topic of its fifth SPMJ forum. The SPMJ invited Oil Industry Management Bureau Assistant Director Rodela Romero and Retail Marketing Monitoring and Special Concerns Division Chief Lorelai Capistrano of the Department of Energy, or DOE, and Rafi Capinpin, Executive Director of the Philippine Institute of Petroleum, or PIP, as resource persons at the forum. During the forum, the resource persons from the DOE explained why and how the mini gas stations came to be. First, they are known technically as Technology Solution Retail Outlets or TSROs. The DOE came up with the TSRO to address the problem of so-called bote-bote retailers of fueling in far-flung barangays or areas where regular fuel stations are not easily available. Bote-bote retailing is both illegal and unsafe, while those who buy fuel by the Coke bottle won't be sure about the fuel's purity. In essence, TSROs are meant to encourage people to legally undertake small-scale fuel retailing with fuel vending machines instead of the bote-bote. According to DOE's Romero and Capistrano, regulation and guidelines for establishing and operating TSROs are laid out under Rule 4 of DOE Circular 2017-11 or the Revised Retail Rules. Among the guidelines are the following. TSROs can only be put up in areas where bote bote fuel is being sold, as certified by LGU's concern. A distance of 1 km radius from another retail outlet shall be observed. No other commercial establishment shall be installed constructed within the retail outlet other than those necessary for its operations. The vehicle being serviced and the delivery of the liquid fuels by the tank truck shall at all times be inside the business premises. A 1 meter distance shall be maintained for the cashier's booth and dispensing pump to firewalls. During the supply operation of tank trucks, there should be one meter working distance maintained for the tank truck to fire walls, and TSROs are allowed to store fuel above ground up to a maximum of 2,000 liters per gasoline or diesel. The DOE resource person said that there are now over 200 TSROs in operations mostly in coastal areas of Oriental Mindoro, Sargao, and in the Panay region. They also noted that there are two major suppliers of equipment to TSROs, Kepi Tech Center and Estacion Iwan. Both are heavily promoting the establishments of TSROs mainly through social media. The DOE is monitoring how TSROs are operating has noted many violations of guidelines as well as regulations of other government agencies such as the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DNR and the Bureau of Fire Protection or BFP. Under DOE rules, the retailing of fuels is subject to pertinent permits and licenses issued by the DNR, BFP, the Bureau of Internal Revenue, and other relevant government agencies, including local government units. However, the DOE representative said that the DNR and BFP have yet to issue guidelines governing TRSOs and fuel avenging machines. Meanwhile, the DOE continues to evaluate how the TSROs are operating with the aim of revising guidelines to make their operations safer. That was just part one of Motoring Forum tackling the rise of so-called technology solution retail outlets. Part two will tackle the concerns of the private oil sector regarding the rise of mini gas stations. That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. 
It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. on motoring today. We now have this week's valuable motoring tips, starting off with some rotator reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. Solid white center lines are meant to separate the movement of traffic on multi-lane roads. Kapag ikaw ay nasa daan na mayroong solid white center line, you're not supposed to overtake unless the way is clear and safe. Kung hindi naman, stay on your lane and wait until you can overtake to avoid accidents. More motoring tips for you here on Motoring Today. Proper driver's demeanor while behind the wheel from Mitsubishi Motors Philippines. Payong chopper lang kaibigan. Ako si ka Jojo Martin, isang kapwa niyo chopper. Maging maayos sa pananamit tuwing papasada. Kung gusto natin makarami ng pasahero, gawin natin presentable ang ating mga sarili sa tuwing tayo ay magmamaneho. Ugaliin ang isuot ang uniform ng samahan na iyong kinabibilangan kapag papasada sa daan. Iwasang magsuot ng mga pambahay na damit, katulad ng sando at chinelas, kung ayaw mo ang pasahero ang magalit at umiwas. Tandaan, kapag maayos ang kasuotan, pasahero ay iyong kaibigan. Ito po si ka Jojo Martin, payong chopper lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa niyo chopper. part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now! The Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. We start with the latest news and developments. Slalom Racing is back. Race Motorsports Club finally got to hold a slalom event after the COVID-19 pandemic shut down the 2020 motorsports season. The 2021 Phoenix Pulse National Slalom Series drew motorsports enthusiasts to the Tarlac Circuit Hill last October 30 for a day of setting fast times around the slalom course with long straights, fast turns, tight chicanes, and some 180-degree turns. Luis Moreno topped the sporting class of the 2021 Toyota GR GT Cup National Finals. Besting rivals Terence Laliave and Stefano Rivera in the same race held on a virtual Suzuka circuit. In a race in which participants competed using the GR edition of the Toyota Yaris, Jeff Armiole was the fastest finisher in the promotional class for those relatively new to the eSport. In the junior class, Russell Cabrera bested all e-racers who are 17 years old and below. 
All three earned the grand prize of 100,000 pesos while also getting a brand new Sony PlayStation 5. Meanwhile, those who want to try out the GT Cup experience can head over to select Toyota dealerships on the following days. Toyota Otis from November 8 to 14, Toyota Makati from November 22 to 28, and Toyota Alabang from December 6 to 12. More in the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today, as we now give you Race Weekend. It was a bit of wait for the second leg of the 2021 Toyota Gazoo Racing Bios Cup. But it certainly was worth it, especially for the racers. Vegan Fabio Ide here. Kamusta na po kayo dyan? As you guys can see, we are here in Clark International Speedway for our second leg for the Toyota Gazoo Racing Philippines Festival. about 15 minutes before the race and what I do to prepare is um, we're just chilling honestly Hey guys, it's Troy Montero and we're here for the second leg of the Toyota Vios Cup. It's going to be a wet one, but we're excited. So all of us, uh, Fabio, Daniel and I are excited to represent and we're really going to push it all the way this race and hopefully give you guys a really fun, exciting race. Today is a practice day. Um, as you guys can see, everybody's lined up to get their turn in. Um, we've got like 10 more minutes of practice, so I'm, I'm here taking a little bit longer and man, it's fun. Looks like the rain uh, just arrived, so the track will be very slippery. So yeah, I'm just hopefully, first of all, I have to make sure my car is in tip-top shape. And yeah, I'll prepare also myself to be ready for the slippery conditions. And hopefully I can get it to the top of the podium. It's my first time and um, yeah, I hope na kay top five ako because my girlfriend's watching me. So syempre, my inspiration dyan, so I don't want to let her down, so yep. I messed up on my second run. Pero hindi pa rin ako titigil. Laban pa rin ako. I actually was able to grab third. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm starting on P3. Bro, and let's go to Rebel. Rebel? Close? Ah, oh, close, close, close. Bro, race muna. Race, race, race. Yes, yes. <laughs>
the truck is a bit wet today so meaning it will be more exciting because at least I will be able to catch up you know because they are faster than me so let's see what's gonna happen today I'm here at the CGR Autocross 2021 Challenge. Kakatapos ko lang. Very mixed emotions actually. Kasi hindi ko pa alam yung time ko. It's raining. And I'm under the rain talking to you guys, you know. I might get sick, but it's your fault. Come on, go. <laughs> <laughs> on track racing is back. But fans may have a bit of a wait before they can watch the Vios races live on site and experience the Wakodoku spirit firsthand. And that's this week's world of motorsports. Motoring today continues right after this break. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Live Extra with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. The Auto Hub Group has added another automotive brand to its network of dealerships. This time, it's Suzuki. The company, through Zoom Hub Incorporated, has opened Suzuki Auto BGC satellite at Crescent Park in West Bonifacio, Global City. The new go-to place in BGC for Suzuki vehicle owners features a 629 square meter area with two-car display, sales and reception, two dedicated service work base, and a parts warehouse. At the virtual launch of Suzuki Auto BGC, Zoom Hub President Willie T. Tan said the Auto Hub Group shares Suzuki Philippines' vision to be the preferred brand and the automotive group of choice. He added that by providing innovative solutions, quality and trend-setting products, and reliable services to clients, they can ensure the best interests and returns for all their stakeholders. 
Also during the virtual launch, Suzuki Vice President and General Manager for the Automobile Division, Keiichi Suzuki, thanks ZoomHub for its efforts in making Suzuki products and services more widely accessible to Filipinos. The new Range Rover has been unveiled at the Royal Opera House in London in a launch broadcast globally. The fifth generation Range Rover is a modern interpretation of the luxury SUV and features a short front overhang, formal front end and upright windscreen, and distinctive boat tail rear with tapers in plain view. The new Range Rover is the first model to use Land Rover's new flexible module longitudinal architecture and combines advanced technology with modern luxury. Buyers of the new Range Rover have a choice of efficient mild hybrid and plug-in hybrid powertrains and four, five, or seven seat interiors across standard and long wheelbase body designs. Land Rover says an all-electric Range Rover will be available in 2024. The new Range Rover has been designed, developed, and engineered in the UK and will be produced exclusively at Land Rover's Solihull manufacturing facility on a new state-of-the-art production line. Also revealed at the global launch of the fifth generation Range Rover is the new Range Rover SV, which Land Rover says will give customers even more scope to create a truly individual vehicle when it goes on sale in 2022. The specially handcrafted model from Land Rover's special vehicle operations is the first to carry the new ceramic SV roundel. In the Philippines, Coventry Motors Corporation President Chris Ward says the new Range Rover is the most desirable Range Rover ever made and will continue to be the must-have luxury SUV globally. Ward invites Range Rover enthusiasts to catch a glimpse into the future of peerless refinement at the All British Car Showroom in Edsa Greenos and at the BGC Boutique Showroom in 5th Avenue Corner 24th Street. Earlier this year, Kira Corporation introduced a new corporate logo along with the new global brand slogan, Movement That Inspires. This signified Kia's transformation as an automotive company with a new product philosophy centered on creating products that encourage customers to move towards their ambitions. In line with the transformation, Kia Philippines announced that it will be relaunching the brand, adapting this philosophy to Filipino culture and identity. The relaunch, to be held online at 6.30pm of November 8, is a local adaptation of the new and bolder Kia. The event will be streamed on the official Kia Philippines Facebook page and YouTube channel. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Crossovers and SUVs are now a dime a dozen locally. Some cost a pretty penny, others offer good bang for the buck. Some are for the brand conscious, others for the budget conscious. But brands could rise above just being affordable into a mark that is also aspirational. Perhaps that's what Maxus hopes to do in the country with offerings such as the Maxus D60 Elite, the subject of this edition of Showcase. Maxus arrived in the country from China carrying some cachet of having a British connection somewhere in the brand's history. Its Chinese origins is also nothing to be sneezed at being a brand carried by Shanghai Automobile and Industrial Corporation, or SAI, China's largest automaker with a strong global presence. In the Maxus lineup in the Philippines is the D60, a compact SUV that is offered in 5- and 7-seater variants. The 7-seater is the Maxus D60 Elite. It is 4,720mm long, 1,860mm wide, and 1,736mm tall with a 2,760mm long wheelbase, making it a proper compact SUV. The Maxxis D60 Elite certainly exudes a strong presence on the road with its cobweb-like grille, matrix-style LED auto headlights, sleek daytime running lights, streamer taillights, and rad 18-inch alloy wheels. Other notable exterior features include front and rear fog lamps, sturdy functional roof rails, rear window defogger, and auto power folding side view mirrors. The Elite D60 already comes with keyless entry that lets you into a cabin that is both roomy and rich. You've got leather upholstery for 7 seats in the standard 232 configuration. The driver's seat manually adjusts 6 ways. The front passengers manually adjusts 4 ways. The second row seats for 3 split 60-40 and features a pull-down center armrest and allows easy entry function into the third row. The third row seat for two splits 50-50 and can be reclined for better comfort and folded flat to provide more room for luggage, gear, and whatnots of family or sports-oriented individuals. 
the Elite also comes with much of the comfort and convenience features standard in vehicles in the upper end of the status spectrum. Push start, multi-function steering wheel, cruise control. Also standard in the D60 are power windows, central door locking, an air conditioning system with rear air vents. The infotainment system features an 8-inch touchscreen display, USB and Bluetooth connectivity, and 6 speakers. One pushes a button to start the 1490cc four-cylinder turbocharged and intercooled gasoline engine with direct fuel injection. The D60 engine generates 169 PS at 5,500 revolutions per minute and 250 Nm of torque at 1,700 to 4,300 revolutions per minute. The seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission system sends all that power and torque smoothly to the front wheels. Electronic power steering makes driving the D60 a breeze. The suspension system featuring front McPherson struts and multi-link system in the rear is tuned to ride out road imperfections with no drama. The all-wheel disc brake system provides confident stopping power. Adding to confidence in driving the D60 are active and passive driver assist and safety systems that include emergency brake assist, plus hill hold control, and electronic stabilization program. The Elite also comes with reverse camera, front and rear parking sensor, tire pressure monitoring system, and electronic parking brake with auto hold. Also standard are driver and front passenger airbags, driver and front passenger side airbags, three-point ELR seat belts for front and rear seats. And while the D60 in size and features can rightly be considered a compact SUV, Maxxis Philippines has decided to price it well within the subcompact territory, right around the 1.14 to 1.25 million peso range. It is also offered with a Maxxis 5.0 V care program that includes a 5-year 100,000km vehicle warranty and 5-year free emergency roadside assistance. When D60 was rolled out early in the year, Maxus Philippines projected it would help the brand see a five-fold increase in sales. Heading to the last few months of the year, it would be interesting to note if Maxus is making the numbers needed for a five-fold growth in sales. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program, 100% worry-free driving. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Take the lead. The 
Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. We now have our segment that dwells on the wide array of motor and problems, not only in the metro, but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems referred to us, or we ourselves see, and hope to fully find solutions for. Our public service segment is next. Now that the increase in passenger capacity in public transportation has been approved, many are still airing concerns on the assurance that everyone is following the health and safety protocols to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. There has always been a delicate balance of keeping the economy moving and the community safe. The gradual increase in passenger capacity will be from 70% to a full 100%. The Department of Transportation and the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board have set the number of passengers allowed in modern jeeps, buses, UV express shuttles, and on trains. But are we really ready for this move? We had a few questions in mind we hoped to be answered by authorities. Fortunately, the transportation agencies held a press conference and these were answered. For instance, how can we ensure that operators, drivers, and conductors are properly implementing this? We need po natin ang mga operators ng bus at saka mga uh, jeepneys upang ma-inform na po sila kung paano po i-implement natin ito. Hindi naman po natin ang uh, inter-agency uh, enforcement agencies natin no, na magsasagawa po ng enforcement nitong ating increased seating capacity. On enforcement, ASEC Pastor explains that the number of enforcers are low in the metro alone, but he stressed that the department is working to solve this already. Dito sa National Capital Region alone, nasa 40,000 po, 40 to 50,000 ang ating mga traditional jeepneys at na may 4,600 tayong mga bus. Ngayon, ang enforcers po natin sa IAC ay nasa mahigit 300 lamang po at ang LTO po sa NCR ay may 200 plus lamang. Lubang kulang po talaga ang aming enforcers kung kaya't ito po ay ating hinihingan ng budget ngayon na sa Kongreso. Patuloy pa rin hong mag-random inspection ang ating mga enforcers we do hope that the COVID-19 cases will remain low and the increase in passenger capacity in public transportation will not lead to rise in cases anew. So let this also be a reminder that we are still in a pandemic and it's important to still continue to be safe and healthy at all times. That's our public service segment this week. And should you yourself encounter motor problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. See the details being flashed on your screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today. Now on its 35th year of continuing service to the general motoring public, with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.